Chester Zoo. And we're going to introduce you to some of our aquarium animals today. So the first tank that we're going to look at um, has our Bandai cardinals in it, as, long as, as well as some clownfish and anemones. The Bandai clownfish, and uh, the Bandai fish even, um, are really special because they house all of their eggs in their mouth. And the male does that. So he has 30 days where he stops eating completely and looks after the eggs in his mouth. When the babies are ready, they hatch and they normally go into an urchin, which is a really spiky animal. Um, if you've ever been on holiday and stood on something sharp in the sea and hurt your foot, then you'll know what um, an urchin is. And all of the babies live in that so that they're lovely and safe. And then when they're big enough to fend for themselves, um, you'll see them swimming around mid-water. So the more famous fish that we've got in here are the clownfish. You might know them as Nemo. And the normal thing for a clownfish to do is to live in an anemone. Um, so we've got a lovely copper anemone just here. And the anemone is, has a quite powerful sting, but the clownfish has a mucus all over its body that protects it from that sting. Um, whereas the anemone um, gets little bits of leftover food from the clownfish. So there's a, a symbiotic relationship there. So Gemma's just feeding a piece of fish the anemone. It doesn't really look like an animal, but it is. You might see some of its tentacles grabbing the food and bringing it to its mouth, which is right in the centre. So we've got anemones in here, and we've also got soft corals um, and different um, types of zoanthids as well. Occasionally, if the clownfish has had enough to feed, he might actually feed his anemone directly. Um, because it, it wants to keep it, its anemone healthy. Clownfish have a, a weird way of um, reproducing. There's a matriarch, a female matriarch, that's in charge of a group of clownfish, and all of, all of the other subordinate clownfish are male. And if anything happens to the female clownfish, um, for instance if she dies, then the largest of the males will actually transition and become a female clownfish. So unfortunately, finding Nemo isn't very biologically accurate. So we're going to move on to our seahorse tank. or pot-bellied seahorses from um, Australasia and they can have a huge amount of babies all in one go, up to five, six, eight hundred babies even sometimes. And their reproduction is really special as well, so again this focuses on the males which is quite unusual. So they, um, the male and the female do a special dance and they hold each other's tails and do lots of twirling and they'll do that every morning um, from mating until the babies are born. And in that dance, the female passes the eggs to the male and he's got a lovely big pouch um, and he looks after them until they're ready to be born. So Gemma's just um, hand feeding one of our uh, smaller seahorses there. We want to make sure that they're all feeding, so this is why we might do this, to make sure that even the smaller um, seahorses get a chance to feed. So once the male has the eggs in his pouch, um, he is a really doting dad. He, he will swap in uh, water around him um, for fluid in the pouch so the babies are completely acclimatized to their environment when they're born. And then he times it with um, the full moon. So we get babies normally during full moon or new moon. And that's so that all of the seahorses reproduce at the same time. And if there are predators ready to eat the defenseless babies, they have thousands of babies to, to choose from. And once they're full, they'll stop feeding. And that means that all of the rest of the seahorse babies have a better chance of survival. They're really weird creatures. Um, they don't have any teeth, so they suck in their food like a hoover. Um, so they expand their mouth really quickly, and that sucks the prey, um, creates a vacuum and sucks the prey into their mouth. 
They're also a bit like chameleons in the way that they can move their eyes independently, so you might see them looking in two different directions at the same time. And they have a prehensile tail. This tail is really important for holding on to an anchor point, so when the cr waves are crashing down, they can stay nice and secure um, on the bottom of the seabed. They have quite a small territory in the wild. It's about one meter cubed for the males, and the females will move between territories. And um, if the males get lost, um, then they often can't find their way back to their own habitat. They're a little bit useless, really. And we do have a butterfish in here as well, which is the thing that looks a bit like an eel on the bottom. He's called a butterfish because he's covered in um, a slime which makes him very slippery if you try and catch him. So they're actually really good predators. Um, they can eat hundreds of shrimp every day and they um, have a, a one-in-one-out system when they're feeding. And this means that if we ever feed them live food, we need to be really careful about the amount that they get. So if they eat something, they've also got to poo something out. Um, and it means that when they're faced with lots and lots of things to eat, they can be pooing out animals that are actually alive because they haven't spent enough time in their gut. So we're going to show you some of our animals um, a bit more up close. So these are the first ones. These are upside down jellyfish. They've got a really helpful name. Um, and they do live upside down. So they spend their life on the bottom of the sea. And this is because they've got photosynthetic algae in their tentacles. So you might be able to see the little blue bits there. So the algae um, creates food for the jellyfish using sunlight. So you don't even need to feed these guys. You just need to put a good strong light on them. And for two weeks or more, they'll be absolutely fine. They'll be able to survive on that alone. Jellyfish are about 97% water. Um, there's no heart, no bones, no blood. They're very simple animals. There's no brain either. They have a, a decentralized nerve net, is the technical term. And that means that um, they can't really make decisions. They don't have a central processing hub like our brain does for us. are brittle starfish and they're a lot more um, uh, movable, they're a lot more um, agile than normal starfish and we have them in our tanks because occasionally um, the fish in the tank won't eat all of the food and it'll sink to the bottom and these guys are really good scavengers, they'll go on the bottom and catch any and eat any of that um, uneaten food and it means that it's not polluting the tanks. They have a really special way of eating. So on their underside, I can turn one over, right in the center there is their mouth. And they push their stomach, their tummy, out through their mouth, envelop whatever they're going to eat, digest it and turn it into soup almost, and then swallow everything. So that's quite unusual. They've got thousands of little legs that they're um, used for gripping. And there is a type of starfish that will actually hunt. Um, so it stands on the edges of its legs and forms a little um, shape like that, waits for a fish to swim underneath and then clamps down on top of it, which you don't expect from something so simple. So these guys have also got a helpful name, um, they feed on um, buffaloes. So that's um, the head end and then at the other end they've got a sucker that they use for securing themselves and 
We feed them using blood sausages here. So in the wild, they're attacked, uh, attached to legs of animals and pierce their skin um, and then suck blood out and feed on that. It takes about 20 minutes to feed completely. And here we replicate that by putting blood inside sausage skins, which sounds gross, but it's more or less the only way to feed these guys. So then they pierce the sausage skin with their um, teeth and have a good feed. So moving on to more of our resident fish, the biggest guys in here are damber. So these are the damber, and everything in here comes from Madagascar. The damber were thought to be extinct in the wild, um, and then a few years ago they were discovered in one lake in Madagascar, in Lake Seni. If they come a bit closer, or if you look closely, um, you can just see that they've got quite goofy teeth. They've got two um, very sharp teeth at the front of their mouth, and that's because they're specialised snail eaters, so that's what they're getting fed. So the sharp teeth are to break through the snail shell to get the meat out. So the distinctive marking with these guys is they have a black bar that runs above their eyes and goes straight across their face. Um, so all of the fish are named after um, people with prominent monobrows. So there's Helga from Hey Arnold, um, there are the Gallagher brothers in here as well. And if you watched um, Secret Life at the Zoo, um, you'll know about a pair that we were struggling to breed. Um, they're getting on really well still, they've formed a really strong bond and um, unfortunately we haven't managed to breed them yet, but we're still trying. So most of the fish so far have had really helpful names. We've had upside down um, jellyfish and buffalo leech. They both give you a clue about um, what the animals are like. These guys, um, the dark ones, are called elephant nose fish. And it's slightly misleading because that bit that sticks out at the front isn't actually their nose, it's an extension of their chin, um, which kind of changes how you see them. They don't seem so cute once you, once you know that. So, they live in really dark water um, areas where there's lots of uh, leaves and roots and wood in the water, which stains them um, really dark, really um, black water areas. So their eyesight is pretty bad. They rely on um, creating their own um, electric field around them. So they've got um, an area of their body that emits electricity and then a, almost a little receptor area. And when something that's alive disturbs that current, um, then they can locate it and eat it. And they use their um, nose or proboscis or chin, whatever you want to call it, uh, to dig in through, through the mud and find uh, prey items. In this tank we have blind cave fish, so again a, a helpful name. Um, these guys live in caves in um, Amman, and because of their really dark environment, there's no point in them having eyes, they can't really see very much. So they start off with eyes when they're first born, and then if they're in a very dark environment, skin grows over the eyes, and they end up blind. So they're related to um, the fish that you might find in foot spas, and if you put your hand in with these guys then they will try and um, come and eat bits of dead skin or just investigate anything new in their environment really. Again this is another fish that featured on Secret Life of the Zoo. 
and we managed to breed these guys in quite an unusual way by um, hormonally inducing breeding, um, so giving them an injection of hormones which kick-started their reproduction. And they had um, about 600 babies, all in all, so it's a big family. They have a specialised disc on their chin um, and they can use that for climbing. Um, so you might see them out of the water um, attempting to climb up waterfalls and things like that so that they can make their way through the cave networks. So the next species um, are our butterfly gadaids, and they might look slightly brown and boring at first glance, but actually these guys are extinct in the wild. So that means that there aren't any more of this species in the wild, they're only in captivity. And Chester Zoo um, sponsors a fish ark in Mexico, which is where these guys um, live, and we're hoping to reintroduce these guys in the future. They give birth to live babies, so lots of fish um, lay eggs, whereas these guys can um, give birth to up to 20 um, babies in one go. And they're always hungry, they're really greedy fish. So this is the last tank that we've got to show you guys. This is um, our main coral display. So again, lots of the things that might look like um, bits of rock or possibly plants are actually animals. Corals are um, a colony of lots of little tiny animals living together. And they have the same kind of thing as the, as the jellyfish. They have algae that lives inside the coral um, that photosynthesizes, it makes energy um, using the sunlight and that feeds the coral. Some of them do um, eat large prey items as well. So this green bubbly one at the bottom, um, you can post whole fish into that one's mouth and it'll digest it. Another secret life of the zoo character is in here. Um, we've got Popeye who was a fish who had a, a badly infected eye. Um, and that was surgically removed and he has one eye now but he's completely utterly um, fine, he's part of the group um, and he's actually one of the more dominant fish, you might see him come out in a second. And most of the fish in here have a purpose, so the yellow tangs which are the main um, large yellow fish are in here to eat algae, so algae competes for space and can shave some of the corals um, and they're known as um, the gardeners of the reef. So they'll take care of any algae for us. Some of the corals can be quite territorial and they have long stinger arms that can come out and sting any coral that gets too close to them. So there's lots of um, politics and warfare sometimes happening in this tank. So when the um, symbiotic algae um, that lives inside the coral dies, the coral ends up looking like this, and we call that bleached because it's completely utterly white and hasn't got any colour left in it. Um, and that's um, very pretty, and you might see it um, for sale if you're on holiday abroad, but the reef 
provides a, a really good environment, a nursery environment for all of the baby fish. And this particular piece has probably taken in excess of 10 years to grow. So it's best to avoid uh, buying it if you see it on holiday. Um, it's meant that part of the natural ecosystem has been destroyed. And also it's a real pain to dust, so not practical. To replicate their natural diet, um, we give the um, yellow tangs nori seaweed. So the sheets of nori that you normally have for making sushi um, are one of the favourite things of the tangs to eat. The biggest fish in here um, is the guy with the, with the black and white face and the yellow body, and he's our fox faced rabbit fish. We did have one um, fox, -faced rab fox faced rabbit fish that came to us as a donation, and you would need a big tank for one of them, um, but he outgrew his owner's tank and came to us and he had got in the habit of spitting water at you if you didn't feed him fast enough. This is Popeye just here. If he turns around, you can see that his eye um, socket on the other side is completely healed over. But he's doing really well. Thank you for joining us in the aquarium. If you'd like to support Chester Zoo, uh, please look for a link in the um, description for this video. And if you want to head over to our education Facebook page, there's a live Q&A um, now that you can join in with. Um, and thank you for coming to visit. Um, hope you can come and visit in person soon.